shot at a time. He's not using the jab to keep Echols stable where he can set up those big shots. He's looking for one at a time too much. Well, one got to him in this round. What we were talking about earlier, here's a good example of it. Echols goes straight back. Quinlan follows him. And he lands the right hand. The most significant punch was the right hand. And that would make sense, though, because the left hand low of Echols. Fine looking New York based prospect in the red, white, and blue, Peter Quillen, 24 years old, 17 0. Goes by the nickname of Kid Chocolate after one of the most popular fighters in this era, back in the 30s, the original Kid Chocolate, who was also of Cuban heritage. Much like Quillen. Quillen has been very thoughtful of the fact that his mother suffered a stroke a year ago, and he thanks God that she's still with him today. Very likable young man. Got a taste of his personality earlier tonight in this broadcast. And he thinks he can make something of it in this middleweight division. But this is a test for him. Toughest test he's faced so far in his career. Now, here's an opportunity that we talked about in the fight plan where Quillen can maybe stand his ground a little bit, use that height, and he has great size, great height, made Echoes, maybe make Echoes miss, and then come right back and nail Echoes. Echoes plays will fire a little bit. Because after he throws, he doesn't move right away. He waits to see if you're going to slow back before he moves. And by waiting, at the age of 35, his reflexes just might not carry him. He might be a little late, and the punch might be on time. Behind the jab is Eccles. On the inside he goes. Big sweeping right hand miss, but the left didn't. And again, the same situation that Echols continues to give Quillen an opportunity with. He goes straight back, and when he goes straight back, he's very vulnerable. Both men open up with right hands. Echols tries to get around that left guard. Now, I've given the first two rounds to Quillen. I think most people watching this would feel the same way, but again... I think that Quillen doing Echols some favors by giving up that height, by giving up that size, and falling inside to the short Echols. And to an Echols who can still bang. Right lead that time. You can see that Quillen still hasn't learned the art being able to stand at a certain range and be tall and be able to stay at a distance that's good for him and not good for his opponent. Coming to the end of three, Eccles and Quillen. ESPN Classic is going to offer up some boxing this weekend. You're enjoying Wednesday night fights here. Of course, we have Friday night fights. And then you can tune in on Saturday to see Thomas Adamak against O'Neill Bell in their 12-round cruiserweight number one mandatory eliminator. That is live boxing, the ESPN Classic, Saturday at 6 Eastern. It's also available on ESPN360.com. So three nights of live fights on the ESPN Networks this week. Of course, Teddy and I will be heading to Miami, Oklahoma tomorrow. Get ready for Friday Night Fights heavyweight main event between Johnson and Smith. More than 43% of his punches landed so far in this fight. Peter Quillen is in the red, white, and blue. 17 0 against the three time world title challenger, Antoine Eccles. You know, when you're in that ring, there's so many things you're trying to accomplish. Of course, you're trying to set up your opponent to so you can land more than he can land. But you're also trying to maneuver a little bit and get your opponent off balance. Try to take little steps back, maybe get your opponent to. You know, trip up a little bit, reach in a little bit, misgauge where you are. But Quillen does a lot of that 
getting off balance to himself. Mm -hmm. he, you know, Eccles doesn't even have the pressure of having to work those little traps and those tricks to get Quillen off balance. Quillen, you can see right in front of you. He reach in, pick it off stride. And there again, you can see a good example of it. Quillen's going to climb up that boxing ladder. His people need to work on those fundamentals. And one of them, as fundamental as it gets, balance. Come on, let's stop holding the box. Come on. Eccles puts a right hand to the body. Speaking of body shots, how about the body shots this weekend in some of the featured fights on Saturday night? We're going to get Teddy's take on Margarito Cintron and Cotto Gomez coming up at the end of this round. And again, the legs do not look stable underneath Eccles' butt. He's getting a little help again. Not from his friend, but from his opponent, Quillen. Quillen slowing down the pace a little bit. Not making the 35-year-old maybe a little shop worn fight him. Not making him work. Not making him pay a price. Not putting more damage on those legs. Also, Quillen throwing one punch at a time, Joe. An experienced fighter, boy. They love to see that. One is a lot easier to deal with than two, three, or four. Right. Even at 35, you can use your experience to get away from one. But that is the big factor in this fight, the experience edge for Eccles. There was a last time we saw Eccles fight. He started to think, okay, he's fading, and then that experience kicked in, and he found the second gear to see if he can do so tonight against Quillen as they come to the end of round number four. Echoes shakes that one off. Joe and Teddy with you here at the Hammerstein Ballroom and not far away. A couple good fights down the road in AC this past weekend. The rematch of Margarito versus Cintron. And Tony Margarito, boy, he kind of picked up where he left off when they met a few years back, didn't he, Teddy? Yeah, I guess it did. But, you know, I'll say it right now, you know, for full disclosure, I picked Cintron. Of course, that would be an upset pick, but I picked him. I thought he would mature. I thought he would get seasoned. And that body shot, of course, does damage like it did the first time. But... Joe, I thought that from that experience and since then, he would have grown up a little bit and gotten more seasoning and been able to be able to handle the pressure a little bit better. I think he handled the pressure a little better. A lot of people can argue with me, but not enough for the kind of guy that he had in front of him coming at him so quickly. And I think his technique failed him. i got to be honest with you, because when you look at Cintron, he stood straight up, he pulled straight back, he laid over on the right way, he ate right hands. His technique was not there the way it needed to be against a guy like Margarito, who was getting into punching range and letting those hands go. So, yeah, maybe the seasoning, maybe the lack of experience, you know, maybe the mental part betrayed him. But the technical part, that did not help him. That really shocked me how poor he was technically. Wrap up on Margarito Syndrome as we are in round number five. Antoine Eccles in the end. Peter Quillen, who is the Brooklyn based fighter, who's created quite a fan following here in New York. In fact, there was a uh, interesting article in the Post about Quillen, about his love for pets. He has a gray parrot from Africa, a python named Miami, a long nosed lizard, and a little bearded dragon. And then, after all those exotic pets, he goes and recently adopts a little kitten. And I hate to throw into this category. He's not going to love this. But also he has a manager named John C. Who happens to come from where I come from, Staten Island. And who happens to be a young manager who I think will be good for this business. Because he cares about fighters and he's passionate. And he's not going to love that I compare him. I threw him in a category with um, lizards yeah, a lizard, and a dragon and a little, kitten. And a, a little kitten. I'll tell you what's good for the boxing business. Is an unbeaten prospect fighting in his home town in a setting like this. We have a few thousand people here right in the heart of Midtown Manhattan, and these are real movers and shakers in Midtown Manhattan. Top dollar, top notch, private invite only charity event, getting a taste of an unbeaten New York-based prospect that can only do well for him down the road. No, I agree with you. It's good to be able to go those kind of venues, any venues where you just revigorate the interest in this great sport. And again, I think Willen 
really helping out the old man. I know Eckles doesn't want to be called an old man, but, you know, in a punching sense or a fighting sense, you've been in as many tough fights as this warrior has, you're not really young anymore. But Eckles, plenty game. He's always been that. Plenty of experience. And again, Dylan looking for one shot at a time. Not fighting consistently. Giving Echoes the kind of pace that a guy at this stage in his career would want. Not too fast. Sets the table well for a lot to still be determined in this main event. It does, and it sets the table for a lot to be said in the corners of both fighters. In the corners of the young Quillen, who's going to need something in his ear to tell him, hey, pick it up a little bit. And now Quillen... With a late surge to close out this fifth round. And speaking of closing out fifth round, such was the case with Miguel Cotto.